So we're going to look today <clears throat> at how this standard form of a linear equation is related to the other linear equation that we've gotten very familiar with. Um, in y equals mx plus b, the m is the slope. And the B is our y-intercept. And when we're working with e real equations, those typically are numbers. And the X and the Y stay as their own variable as X and Y. In this equation, the capital letters, the A, the B, and the C, in real equations, those are numbers and the lowercase x and y stay as x and y. So that's one thing that the two of them have in common. When we're talking about solving with standard form of a linear equation, what we're trying to get is a line on a graph. Quite often the solution for this is the graph itself. There's two methods to get there and we're gonna work with the first method today. And the first method is to convert to slope-intercept form, or y equals mx plus b. We know how to graph with y equals mx plus b. We start with the b, and we get something on the graph on the y-intercept, and then we use our slope to find another point. And as soon as we have two points on the graph, we can make our line. So that's our goal today, is to take this equation and turn it into this equation that we're already familiar with so we can make a graph. And I'm going to talk to you about the steps to do that, and we're going to practice it together. And honestly, do you remember when I kept making you solve for variables and move equations around a couple weeks ago? This was, this was one of the reasons why. So our step one. Move the AX term. To the other side of the equation by addition or subtraction. This is what we've been referring to as zeroing out a term in our equations. Step two, divide everything, and I want you to underline that everything, by B. Whatever the number is, it's in the B place, we're going to divide everything by it as our step two. And in doing this, we are going to get an invisible one with the y. <clears throat> Step three is to graph. First part of the graphing is to graph the y-intercept. And then the second part is to use the slope to find one more point. I'm going to say at least one more point. Those are our three steps. We've done these things over and over in solving equations before. We've zeroed out terms. We've divided to get invisible ones. We've solved for a variable. What we're saying here is we're going to be solving for y.
Okay, we're going to open this up and we're going to do it for one of uh, an example on the inside and then we'll do some more practice together. I'll show it to you again as we're going. All right, so here is our example problem. We have 3x plus 5y equals 15. Up above that, I want you to write standard form, which is ax plus by equals c. Remember I said that the capital A, B, and C in equations are numbers, and the X and Y stay as variables? Do you see those in those places? What is our A term here? A is 3. What's our B term? And what's our C term? Right. So let's go back to our steps on the front. Step one, move the AX term to the other side by addition or subtraction. We're going to zero it out. So I'm going to rewrite the whole thing first. 3X plus 5Y equals 15. And I'm going to zero this out by subtracting 3X from both sides. Because 3x is my ax set. Do you guys see what I'm talking about here with my steps? <clears throat> that leaves us with 5y is equal to negative 3x plus 15. I've taken and zeroed out 3x, but in doing that, I've got a negative 3x on the right side. I'm trying to turn this into slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. Where is the mx in this equation? It's right after the equal sign. And when I've turned this over here, my x is right there, so I want to put it in the same place as this mx. See what I'm doing there? It's like I'm sliding the pieces into the right places. Okay, let's go back to our cover. What did step two say? Divide everything by B. We're going to get an invisible one with the Y. What is our B term here? It's five. And I'm literally gonna divide every single term by five. Five over five, is that giving me my invisible one? That means I've just solved for y, because y is by itself. What's in the place in front of the x? It's the slope, right? What's our slope here? Negative three over five times x. And what happens with the 15? It's divided by five and becomes So that's my equation. And now we know what to do with it. We've been practicing this for the last week and a half. Let's go back to what we put on the cover though. Myra, this is what you were asking for. Step three says, graph. First, y-intercept. Second, use slope to get at least one more point. Oops, I left off the word get. So what is my y-intercept? Positive 3. This graph scale counts by 2, so I'm putting that point in between the 2 and the 4. And then my slope is negative 3 over 5, so I'm going to rise up 3 or run down, or rise or run. I'm going to rise up 3 or go down 3 and run 5.
Does that look like it's going to get me a negative line? And that's what I need. So all I have to do is get two points on there and I can draw my line. These two equations look different because they're in different forms, but both of them make this one line on the graph. Today we did it by using our first method, which is converting to slope-intercept form. Tomorrow we will work on method two. But for today, we're gonna continue by practicing on this paper.